What's up, my nomies? Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. Uh, this week, we are talking about the Mixing Station app. Uh, this is a fantastic app if you are using a bunch of different digital mixers, including the X32, M32, Xair Series, Behringer Wing, the Allen Heath SQ, QU, or GLD, or I think it's the um, Soundcraft SI or VI. So there's a bunch of mixers that this is available for now. Uh, you can use it on an iPhone, like I'll demonstrate today, uh, or an iPad, Android, a whole bunch of different things out there you can use it on. Now, what's great about this app is that, especially if you're someone like me who maybe mixes at multiple different places with different bands, that kind of thing, um, it's one way to uh, have the same basic layout, no matter what the layout on the board is when you get there, um, you can just kind of have things rearranged on your app and get around very quickly with some features that the board itself may not actually offer. Um, so today I'm going to show you some of my favorite settings, um, things that have really helped me when I've had to hop onto someone else's mix. So we're looking at this on, a, on an iPhone. Um, so this is like kind of the smallest that it's possibly going to be. Um, we're going to start by going up to the uh, cog wheel in the top right hand corner. In the app settings, category general, we've got the orientation set to landscape. Scroll down, actually that's all we need to do there. In mixer, uh, we're going to turn on pop groups. Now this is the paid version of the app. It's only like $7. It's totally worth it. There are, depending on what uh, platform you're on, there are some free versions as well, but I would say definitely go ahead and buy it. The guy, David, who makes this does an excellent job of constantly updating it. Um, it's definitely worth uh, spending less than $10 on. All right, down under Sins on Fader, I like to turn all these on. It just means that when you're looking at someone's mix, you're going to have things flashing at you, um, which helps you to know that you're not looking at the front of house mix, which is very helpful. Uh, and then at the very bottom here, where it says invert color, I like to turn that on. The reason being that if the band is connecting with their ears app to your console, um, unless they've changed this recently, they cannot see inverted colors on their app. Um, so I make sure that anything they need to see is normal, non-inverted colors, and then anything that I want to see that I don't want them to specifically see, at least color-wise, um, I'll make inverted. But that's not as attractive on your tablet. So on the tablet itself, I invert them um, just so that it looks a little prettier for what we're doing. So that works really well for me. Okay, moving over to the layers page. Uh, as a default, it will size the channels for having eight of them on a page, but there'll be times when we have more, there'll be times when we have less. So we're gonna change that from eight to auto. And then the two things we're gonna use the most are the DCAs and the effects return. So we're gonna move both of those up to the top here. I'm just grabbing on the left-hand side and pulling up. And the only other thing I wanna do on this page is I wanna create a, uh, a butt dial proof page. So just a blank extra layer. So we're gonna click on this little plus sign, click one layer. We're going to change the name from layer to just blank, okay. And we're gonna put that at the very, very top. Okay, moving on to layouts. We're gonna create a custom layout with some um, mute groups for our effects. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and hit this little plus button and add a button. And we're gonna put that at the bottom right hand corner. And I'm gonna make this a three by three because that is kind of just the smallest that we can do for an iPhone screen that will still fit my fat thumb. Um, so we're gonna click on that, go to edit. This is going to be the tap tempo. Put tap. Why are you yelling at me? Um, we're going to make that green. And then for action, it's going to be uh, effect. I've got my stereo delay as my third rack effect. And we're going to select time. And then when we back out of that, you'll see it's now beating to the tempo um, that we're working on. We're gonna click on that again and hit clone, clone A. And this next one up, we're gonna change this. This is going to be attached to our mute group for the delay. So we're gonna call this delay mute, delay mute. Oops. 
There we go. Delay mute. We'll make this guy red. And then the action on this is going to be effects. Sorry, not effects. Um, mute group. And then I have this on mute group six. Okay. We'll clone that again. This guy is going to be the mute for our V verb or vocal reverb. And the mute group on that will be for mute group five. Clone for the final time here. Put this guy, oops. Got mosquitoes chasing me while I do this. This guy is going to be for our B verb or band reverb. And of course, if you have a separate band reverb and drum reverb or however you have it, you can do these how you want. And this will be attached to mute group four. Cool, so now we have that, we're gonna drag these guys over. Oops. Okay. And then finally, this is our channel strip, so we'll fill the gap with that. All right, so when you're done with all that goody stuff, it's going to look like this. Right now we're on our dummy page so that nothing can get pressed. If we go down to our DCA page, this is where most of the fun's gonna happen. We have pop groups enabled, so if I wanna get to something like the kick drum, all I have to do is click on drums, and then here are all my drum channels um, that are assigned on the console to the drum DCA. That's the beauty of pop groups, and again, pop groups come as part of the um, paid app version on here. To get back, all we do is hit this left-hand corner uh, back button, and we're back here. So for the most part, you can get to anything with like one click from this page. Now, looking at my DCAs, you might notice that there's a couple things that are missing. For example, I think it's wasteful to have a DCA just for your bass, because your bass player, speaking as a bass player, usually only has one channel, maybe two channels um, that they're using on the board, so why would I use an entire DCA for that? And part of the reason why I don't want to waste the DCA is because I can do this. If I click and hold on the DCA button here, I can add more than just the eight DCA channels that are on here. So I'm going to add bass. I'm going to drag it over after my drum kit. We'll do the same with acoustic one. Keys left. I don't need keys right because these guys are linked. Um, let's grab vocal one because that is going to be... Um, usually our worship leader, uh, so we can, uh, let's put it right there actually. Um, and so we can uh, get to that very quickly, just like that. Um, let's see, what else do we want in here? Uh, let's grab our computer and our aux channels. And I think that'll be about everything that we need for right now. So now you can see it's resized it. Everything's a little smaller, but even on an iPhone, it's still big enough for my fingers to grab onto. Um, if it's not already here, then it's in a group, and I can just click on the group and get there. So everything is right at finger's length. Um, the uh, vocal, or sorry, the effects are on this next page over, so I can adjust those as I see fit, and then just go back to the DCA page. Um, so for the most part, for any normal service, Everything I need is right here or can be added very, very easily. Um, and that works really, really well for me. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.